When Nanda V Movies invited me to take part in one villainous scene where myself along with a motley crew of video essayists pick our favourite villain scene to analyse, I knew I wanted to pick a supervillain from an animated movie. After all, there's some truly memorable big baddies such as The Prowler, Megamind, this guy from Big Hero 6, uh, I think his name was... Uh, angry Nigel. But I think Syndrome outshines them all and his villain reveal is so well constructed, let's just say I'm a big fan. The Incredibles came out in 2004 and this follows something of a revival for superhero movies with the X-Men, Blade and Spider-Man. No, not that one, nor that one. No, 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 no. But given that Pixar movies can take about four years to make, The Incredibles doesn't draw its superhero influence from its counterparts, but rather the golden age of comic books, hence why it's set in the 1960s. And of course, when you have comic books, you have comic book fans. Well, you should get some friends who aren't printed on paper. What, you mean action figures? Franchises live and die by the size of its fandom, and so they will often sculpt and mold the media to please them, aka fan service. But this constant to-in and fro of influence over the media piece itself can give some hardcore fans the disillusion that because they're such a big fan, then they must also have a degree of ownership over it. This is how a toxic fandom is spawned, which brings me back to The Incredibles. I mean, after all, I am your biggest fan. Syndrome is the movie's surprise antagonist, and he's set up at the start of the movie as a young fanboy desperate to stand alongside his idol, Mr. Incredible, aka Bob Parr. I am your number one fan! And the rejection sets him on this dark path from psychic to psycho. So let's look at this villain reveal a bit closer to see what else it reveals. But first... If, like me, you've always wanted to create your very own demon, then draw a satanic shape and use this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Demo Creator. Oh, Demo Creator. Oh, okay. Demo Creator is a screen recording software, so you can easily capture videos and game footage and even edit them in the software as well. It also comes with a bunch of extra features like effect packs, stickers, and annotations. So click the link in the description and get your free trial today. Are you sure this doesn't create demons as well? Yes, I'm sure. The scene opens with Bob's meeting with Destiny. He enters the conference room and sits at the furthest end of the table. Note the number of empty chairs, a hint of all the other superheroes that came before him and how he is the last one in line. I love Syndrome's themed table here. Syndrome really knows how to do branding. But then, knock knock, it's the Omnidroid. Mr. Incredible has fought this before and won just barely, but he was prepared before. This time he's caught totally by surprise and is thrown around while a voice rings out. It's bigger! Ladies and gentlemen, it's too much for Mr. Incredible! Syndrome here is narrating the fight like a show. The language harkens back to movie trailers, but more aptly, comic books, with its overly dramatic language. You, you know, I went through quite a few supers to get it worthy to fight you, but man, it wasn't good enough! We later learn that this line is in reference to the number of superheroes that the Omnidroid has fought and killed while it got updated and refined, like beta testing a bomb. Syndrome has exploited the Super's yearning to return to superhero work, just like Bob, following the changes in law banning them. You could see this as a commentary on the overabundance of superheroes, something you might be feeling now with the ever-growing MCU, despite predating the whole thing. But I think the disposable nature of the Supers is because he treats them like products. Syndrome is able to be devoid of empathy because he doesn't even see people as people. Whether they're admired superheroes or terrified citizens, ultimately, they're just playthings. This is objectification to dehumanize people and, in Syndrome's case, for convenience. Because it's easy to not feel bad for breaking playthings if it gets you closer to your favorite plaything. After you trashed the last one, I had to make some major modifications. Sure, it was difficult, but you are worth it. I mean, after all, I am your biggest fan. This is the moment when, for Mr. Incredible, the problem goes from a vague general threat to a deeply personal 
problem. Buddy? I have to commend the direction. They could have had Bob have a mini flashback here to hold the hands of the audience to be like, Hey, do you remember the kid from the start? That, that's him. That's him now. My, how he has grown. But they don't. They trust us to know exactly who this person is with a single line of dialogue, which perfectly encapsulates everything about this villain. Let's go back to that first scene. Look, I know I'm talking about this scene, but, well, I have hold of the remote, so shush. Cool, ready for takeoff. What the? Who are you supposed to be? Well, I'm Incrediboy. What? Young Buddy here sneaks into Mr. Incredible's car. This is already grossly crossing boundaries. This is different to an organized social fan event. This is an invasion of personal space. Sometimes fans have such a parasocial relationship with their heroes that they forget it's one way and cannot just presume it will be reciprocated no matter how big a fan they are. Which is why when fans turn up at celebrities' houses, it can be incredibly dangerous, especially if they are scorned. Because if you base your entire identity on being a fan of something, then what happens when that something is taken away? My name is not Buddy! And it's not Incrediboy either! That ship has sailed! All I wanted was to help you. I only wanted to help! This is a lie. And this is worse than some elaborate trick because it's a lie that even Syndrome himself believes is true. During the encounter with Bomb Voyage, he turns up again, throwing himself into a dangerous situation that Mr. Incredible is forced to take responsibility for. And the whole time, he's still trying to impress Mr. Incredible. He doesn't do anything to Bomb Voyage. He's right there. He's right there. Just, 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 just hit him. Hit him. Buddy is not interested in helping people. He just wants to be seen to help. He wants to be a hero. He wants the glory and praise, the same kind he heaped onto Mr. Incredible himself, but without actually being a hero. And just when all hope is lost, Syndrome will save the day! I'll be a bigger hero than you ever were. You mean you killed off real heroes so that you could pretend to be one? This performative nature of causing a situation so that he can resolve it and get praised for doing so is a real thing. It's called Hero Syndrome. Oh, look at that! It's in the name! For example, a firefighter might start a fire, not with the intention to cause harm, but just so they can be the one to put it out. So when Syndrome says he was just trying to help, he would rather endanger people more if it would make him look like a hero. I was wrong to treat you that way. I'm sorry. As we've seen, Mr. Incredible was not wrong to push Syndrome away. He was overstepping boundaries. I've seen some people say that this is Mr. Incredible's fault, that he should have let Buddy down gently, but no, he shouldn't. F*** Buddy. No, 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 not like that, not like that. Look, I've been nice, I've stood for photos, signed every scrap of paper you pushed at me, but this No, 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 you don't have to worry about training me. I know all your moves, your crime-fighting style, favorite catchphrases, everything. Notice Buddy's one-track mind and how he constantly assumes what Mr. Incredible is thinking. Hey, hey, aren't you curious about how I get around so fast? See, I have these rocket boots. Go home, Buddy. What? Now. When his fanaticism has made him blind, he won't see the lines that he has crossed. So Mr. Incredible is in the right. Like, if I came home to somebody sleeping with my wife, I would be in the right to say, hey, what the hell? But if they then brought a gun on me, I too would be like, oh, I do apologize for my harsh tone earlier, would sir like a beverage? See, now you respect me because I'm a threat. That's the way it works. Now we roll into the villain's monologue, a useful exposition dump, laying down the motivations and backstory, but this is demonstrating one of Syndrome's defining traits, his showmanship. Just like narrating the Omnidroid fight before, now he's gloriously boasting about his accomplishments, making up for the bruising his ego took when Mr. Incredible rejected him. How do you think I got rich? I invented weapons. Syndrome's inventions could change or benefit the world, something actually heroic, but he would hoard them for clout or sell them to countries to be a war profiteer. He could be responsible for genocide. What did he invent? Sentient cars? Gotcha. Uh, no, no. Even as a kid, he didn't use his inventions for any greater good, only to be a show-off clearly making up for some sense of inferiority, such as a lack of superpowers. Am I good enough now? Who's super now? Notice how even when he is winning, Syndrome still thinks of himself 
as the victim. At no point does anyone tell him he can't help because he's not a superhero. And now you have officially carried it too far, buddy. Oh! This is because I don't have powers, isn't it? Well, not every superhero has powers, you know. You can be super without them. This is purely his own insecurities being projected. Like before, when he presumed to know what Mr. Incredible was thinking, he now presumes the rejection came from his lack of superpowers instead of his narcissism. A manifestation of a world where some people have superpowers and others don't. And the perceived value and worth placed on them. Like being a celebrity. And this is a point Mr. Incredible himself begins to echo. They keep creating new ways to celebrate mediocrity, but if someone is genuinely exceptional... This is then not they... about you, Bob. For Bob, if he cannot be a superhero, then what value or worth does he have? And Syndrome represents what happens when a character's wants outweigh the character's needs. In Bob's case, it's to take his place in the family unit. Therefore, always having something that no amount of superpowers will help Syndrome get. I'm Syndrome, your nemesis in it! Oh, brilliant. And just like that, Syndrome throws his plaything away, beginning the chain of events that would eventually spell his downfall. We never learn about Syndrome's backstory, why he rejects his true name and hides under a pseudonym, but we see that he is often alone. Even at the end of this scene, he is alone because he would rather live in the facade of his own creation than the truth. And in the end, when Mr. Incredible's family comes to the rescue, Syndrome is still alone and no one is there to save him. In the space of mere minutes, we see the extremes that Syndrome's idolization of Mr. Incredible has caused. Syndrome represents toxic fandom, and this predates a lot of what we see happen to Star Wars. But with the increased access to people online, there's now a greater platform to ruin people's lives, while still claiming to be just a fan. Fandoms are wonderful when they're in the right place, like healthy debate, criticism, theories, supporting creators on Patreon. But when it begins to invade the lives of the creators in uninvited ways, that's when it crosses a line. And to be clear, there's nothing wrong with like seeing somebody you recognize in the street and asking for a photo or an autograph, but it's a different matter if you follow them home or claim to be a greater part of their lives when you are not. So if we can just take two lessons away from Syndrome in this scene, it's one, it's okay to have heroes and idols, but just remember they owe you nothing. And two, no kicks. Again, this video is part of the one villainous scene, so be sure to check out the playlist of the other video essays in the description. And if you want, make your own villain flavored videos to join the dark side. Just like my evil clone, Zedek, who is opposite to me in every way. For example, I love chocolate and I have never exploded. Whereas Zedek. Lame, 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 lame! Special thanks to this mum's patrons, including Ashley Kinder, Sloan Schoolcraft, Maole Kasemi, Kevin Green, Salix, Setsuni Wave, Nathan Chawinati, Brett Halford, Aaron is Chummy, Tom, Decca Dane, Clam Wham Tlee, Matthew Smith, Joel Jennings, Paul Nipmeyer, and Mark Cunner. And if you would like to help me complete my evil plans to take over the world, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. <laughs> <coughs> I'm okay. <laughs>